So over the last few months, I picked up a couple of new pieces of gear to help with my photography, and I thought it'd be really cool to share what I got with you guys. Hey guys, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com and today I'm going to do something a little bit different from my normal videos and I'm actually going to be talking about gear. I don't often talk about gear, I don't do reviews or anything like that, but over the last few months, as I said, I've picked up a couple of little bits of gear to help with some issues that I've been having. Not necessarily issues, but make life a little bit easier. And I've actually got half a dozen things, I've got six things here that I want to share with you today, so I'm going to just go straight into it and just start talking about all the different bits that I've bought. Now the first bit of gear that I want to show you is a tripod. This is the Manfrotto Pixie. It's a really nice little nifty tripod. It's pretty inexpensive, but it's really nice and solid. I actually picked this up uh, thanks to a recommendation from a photographer friend of mine and fellow YouTuber called Joe Allen. You definitely want to go check his channel out. Uh, it's a really nice tripod that you can use for if you just want to take a little tripod with you whenever you're going out. Um, it will be useful for quite a lot of things, but what I'm going to be using this for is for my vlogs. I have a series of videos called Vlogs where I go out and actually shoot on location and you see the entire process from start to finish. And up until now, I've been holding the camera just in my hand. And the problem I've been having is my hand has been kind of twisted because it's a flat style camera. Um, I've had to kind of hold my arm out and twist in a weird way to get the lens straight on with me. But what I'm going to be doing now is putting the camera directly onto this tripod and actually holding it like this. And it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to mean that I'm not having to twist my arm around to kind of get the shot straight. And I can also give it a little bit of stabilization because of the way it's being held. The weight of the actual tripod itself kind of helps balance it. And also if I'm doing any B-roll footage and I want the camera to capture me doing something, I don't have to try and prop the, the vlog camera on a rock or on a little ledge or something like that. I can just plop the tripod legs down and it's really nice and easy. Uh, another cool feature is actually the ball head. You see this little button here. I just, it, the ball head itself is pretty tough. It's not moving anywhere, but as soon as you push this button in, you can start to move the ball head around. And it's quite good just if you wanna do a little bit of a change, move the, uh, the ball head into a little bit of a different position and then it will stay there. Pretty tough, nice little product, definitely worth putting in the bag. Um, it's strong, it's solid, but it's not very heavy either. Um, I've got it in my new camera bag, which I'll talk about later, and it, you don't even notice it's in the bag, so it's definitely worth looking at if you want a little nice little strong tripod. Now, this is a very cool product. I've looked at this for a little while and I've been hesitant to actually pick it up, but it's only because I've been doing a lot more time lapses that I've actually picked this up. And what is this? This is called the lens skirt. This is the extra large version. And what you do with this is, this is, if you've ever shot uh, through a window, especially in cities, you'll get a lot of different reflections. It's reflections off buildings, it's the dirt on the glass itself, and all these kind of things. And what this does is you actually fold this out and you see these little suction cups, you suck them against the window and it's a complete blackout felt thing where you actually pop the camera through the little hole and what it does is it cuts out all the different reflections. Really, really useful. Um, I've had to, uh, I actually bought it in the UK. I can't remember where I bought it. I can't remember the name of the website, but it wasn't on Amazon. They do not have these on Amazon. So I had to do a little bit of shopping around to kind of find them, but it's extremely useful, especially if you do a lot of cityscape stuff. Uh, it's incredibly light, as you can probably imagine. It's pretty light itself. It folds up quite easily. Uh, I do keep this in my bag whenever I go out and shoot time lapses because I like to shoot through windows. I like doing, I like getting high up and shooting cityscape type of things. So this is extremely useful for me. Um, this is going to enable me to do a lot more interesting shots rather than just being at street level where there's nothing in front of the camera. I can do pretty much wherever I want to at this point. So definitely worth looking at if you shoot through a lot of windows or you want to do cityscapes. Now this is a cool one. Um, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm a little bit of a Peak Design fan. Some of their products are a massive hit to me and some of them are a little bit of a miss. Uh, and this is another one of their Kickstarter projects. This is called The Shield. This is actually a rain shield for your camera. Uh, I haven't had much of a chance to use this in an actual rain situation yet, but as you can imagine, you pop the camera through the little hole and the lens pokes out here and it's got a little edge here so you can actually um, kind of protect the lens from getting rain on it. Um, 
I'm super interested about using this, especially when I'm in Scotland, because as you can imagine, in Scotland, it rains quite a lot. Um, so sometimes you need to kind of protect your camera. Um, I'm using a 5D Mark III, and most of my lenses are weather sealed along with the camera. So I don't have to worry about rain too much, but one or two of the lenses that I use are not weather sealed. And it's also just nice to have. It was pretty inexpensive. Um, it's a little bit more expensive now. I got it during the Kickstarter program. It's definitely worth looking at if you ever are in the rain, uh, which I am sometimes. I've had a little bit of a play with it. Uh, it can be a little bit hard to get on the camera at first. You kind of need to figure out the techniques, um, but they do have videos on it. But if you are ever in the rain or you're shooting near waterfalls or you just find yourself in a country or in a position where you're shooting in the rain, uh, this is definitely worth looking at. It's pretty solid. Uh, I do like it so far. Uh, I've got a couple of little niggles with it, but I'll kind of get back to you guys after I've used it a little bit more. Now, this next one might be familiar to quite a lot of you, and it's this. Well, not the phone, obviously, but the case. This is the Oloclip case, because this works with the Oloclip lenses. Uh, I actually didn't know that they made cases along with the Oloclip uh, lenses, uh, and that's actually what stopped me from using these lenses for a while. For those that don't know what the Oloclip is, it is a lens system that you can attach to your phone, if I can get it on there, and it means that it can change up the lens profile on your camera. So, you know, we've got the normal lens here on the iPhone, but this way you can do like a wide angle or a macro and also a fisheye lens. And these are really, really cool systems. And the way that they've designed it is it can actually work on both the back lens and the front lens. So if you are doing like a FaceTime calls or even periscopes, or stuff like that, uh, any live broadcasting stuff and you're using the front facing camera, this is a great way to actually get a wider perspective because if anybody's used the front facing or the back facing camera on iPhones or most smartphones, uh, the lenses are a little bit tight. Whereas using this method, you can actually get a little bit of a wider field of view. I've been shooting a lot with this lens recently. Uh, if you've been looking at any of my social media stuff, you've been seeing I've been putting up a lot more mobile pictures and that's because I've been shooting them with the Oloclip lens. Really useful system. It's actually pretty inexpensive now, especially if you buy the lens and the case at the same time. Um, but it was really nice to see that they actually do a case for it now. I like using cases on my phone. I like having a little bit of protection, especially with the amount I travel. And with just how small the Oloclip is, it's really easy just to throw in your bag and take with you wherever you go. And that's what I do now. I shoot a lot of pictures with it. Uh, I'm really, really liking the system so far. This next bit of gear is gonna be quite unfamiliar to a lot of you. This is called the Platy, the Platy Pod Pro. It's a pretty weird name, if I'm totally honest. And it doesn't look like much right now, it just looks like a flat piece of metal. But what it is, is it's a way to get your, tri your camera onto a stable platform in a small area where tripods aren't allowed or you can't fit your tripod. It's a really, really cool system. I actually was introduced uh, to this system by RC Concepcion. Um, he's a very uh, well-known photographer, a good friend of mine, and he showed me this system and I was actually blown away by it because um, there are often situations where I'm trying to shoot somewhere where a tripod isn't allowed or there simply isn't the room for a tripod. And what this is, is it's a totally flat surface that you can attach pretty much any ball head to within a reasonable size. And you can then just use it as a, essentially a flat tripod. It's a really cool system. Uh, extremely useful, as I said, in those tight areas where you could fit a camera, but not a camera and a tripod at the same time. Or, and this is especially true, if you're not allowed a tripod in certain areas, because it's not a tripod, it's just a flat piece of metal. Um, obviously, if it's a flat surface, it will fit totally fine. But if you're trying to set up a shot on rocks or in an area that's not level, it actually comes with these little feet that you can just screw through. There's obviously the front and the two back sides. Uh, very, very cool. I've played with it a little bit. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't played with it too much, but what I have played with it so far, I'm really, really enjoying. Uh, it lets you get into spots that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. So that's pretty interesting. Definitely look these up. These are the Platypod Pros. Okay, so I mentioned Peak Design before, and for anybody that has looked at Peak Design recently, you'll know that they have become very famous for this. This is their everyday messenger bag that they put out on Kickstarter uh, uh, quite a few months ago now, and it's been getting rave reviews. It has been, <laughs> been very popular. It's actually had a lot of hype behind it, uh, mainly to do with the way that they have changed the camera bag system. I've never been a big fan of traditional camera bags, and uh, when I saw this, 
pop up on Kickstarter, I immediately backed it. I was actually backer number 70 of 17 or 18,000 by the time the actual Kickstarter ended. Uh, I remember when I saw this quite quickly, I knew that this is a system I wanted to try because I hadn't been happy with my camera bag system, the way that I've used camera bags and other bags before. Um, I will be doing a full review of this bag, as I said, but it is really, really cool. It allows me to get all my gear with me in one place whenever I'm going out and shooting. Uh, I love the way that it holds the tripod. Actually, this is one of my favorite features. Um, it's a very, very cool bag. Um, definitely, if you're looking at a interesting camera bag system that's small but can hold a lot of a lot of gear and is also very comfortable and actually also quite stylish, I would definitely recommend checking out these bags. Um, very, very cool. I'm very happy with it so far. But as I said, I will be doing a full review of the bag in the future. All right, that's it. So as you can see, over the last few months, I've picked up quite a few pieces of gear, but I also don't buy gear for the sake of buying gear. I buy it because I want it to solve an issue or problem I am having. And every bit of gear here that I've bought has solved an issue for me. Minus the Olo clip, that was more just a fun little trick, but everything else here has solved an issue for me. In particular, that messenger bag that I just showed you. Uh, I've been really wanting to try a new system that means I can get out and shoot easily and quicker. And that bag has definitely allowed me to do that. But if you've bought any new recent pieces of gear or little cool trinkets for your camera or your photography or anything like that, anything photography related, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what it is. I'm always looking out for new bits of gear, aren't we all? We're all a bit guilty of that. So I'd definitely uh, like to hear what new things you guys have bought. So if you want to learn more about the products that I've shown, I'll have links down below so you can learn a little bit more about them. But for now, that's it for this week, guys. I've been Kramer Cormick. I hope you've enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next one.